Hello everyone, Megi here. Since I'm now also bringing Soul Calibur content to the channel, I decided to make a sort of beginner's guide. This guide isn't about combos or playstyle, rather its aim is to give you an understanding of the game's mechanics so that you can enjoy and understand the matches when you watch them. So let's get started. Soul Calibur is a 3D fighting game where you have to defeat your opponent by reducing their health bar to zero. One of Soul Calibur's peculiarities is surely its emphasis on movement. You can freely and quite swiftly move in any of the eight directions. To damage your opponent, you will need to attack. Soul Calibur features three main attack types. Horizontal attacks, vertical attacks and kicks. Now, before diving further, we need to talk about fighting games terminology, or notation more specifically. I know this might scare you, especially if you are a newcomer, a beginner, but please do hear me out. In Soul Calibur and in most fighting games, you use a specific terminology to refer to specific attacks. So in Nightmare case, when you're using this attack, you will not be saying I'm using a forward vertical attack, you will say I'm using 6B. And why is that? It's simple, really. The number refers to the directional movement of the attack. As you can see from the picture on screen, 6 refers to the forward movement, using as a reference the keyboard's number pad. The letter, in this case B, refers to the attack type and, consequentially, the button you have to press. So, let's go over the letters for the various actions again. Horizontal attacks are A. Vertical attacks are B. Kicks are K. Guard is G. Now, I won't be going into more detailed terminology like rising attacks, holding down button attacks, sliding input attacks, because this is still a beginner's guide. However, I still wanted to give you guys this basic notation to get you started. So, let's go over some attacks and see what they are called. This is 5A, or just A more commonly, since the standing neutral input is usually omitted. So then, this is B. This is K, this is 6B, 8B, and 4B. As a final note, keep in mind some attacks are performed by pressing more than one button simultaneously. So for example, this is 6AB. Now, with that out of the way, let's talk about defensive options. Mind you, this is a big generalization, but in general, horizontal attacks will hit I, and so you can duck under them. Vertical attacks, on the other hand, can be sidestepped. You can also block attacks. The game has two block positions. Standing block will block high and mid attacks, while crouching block will block low attacks. So, be careful, as crouch blocking will not work on high and medium attacks. You can also jump over low attacks, or even better, use a jump attack. A more advanced defensive mechanic is guard impact. It's much like a For Honor's parry, where you have to time it with your opponent's attack and leaves you open if you fail. However, a successful guard impact allows you to counterattack. Although, in turn, the opponent can counter guard impact your counter. And the last defense mechanics is reversal hedge. It's a special move that allows you to block incoming attacks and then counter attack with your own. You can hold down the reversal hedge to block multiple attacks and then release it when the timing is right. Once fully charged, the reversal hedge is unblockable. What's special about it is that, once it lands, it starts a clash. At the start of the clash, each player inputs a specific attack and the clash will then play out according to their choices. B beats A A beats K and K beats B If a tie happens, it leads to a second clash. In this second clash, another tie will see the player who initiated the reversal edge come out on top. During a clash, you can also try dodging or blocking. Be careful though, using B against a block will lead to the second clash anyway, 
where again Yuxin B will then beat the block. Let's now talk about the special properties that attacks can have. Break attacks. They are identified by the blue sparks they leave behind. They deal a lot of block damage. More on this in a moment. Unblockable attacks are identified by the fairy flames they leave behind. As the name suggests, they cannot be blocked in any way. Speaking of guard damage, when you block, you are taking guard damage. When your guard health is starting to be low, your health bar will be flashing yellow. When it's about to be broken, your health bar will be flashing red. When you get guard broken, you are vulnerable to an attack. Guard health regenerates over time when you're not blocking. Also, break attacks and unblockable attacks beat reversal edge and guard impacts. Let's now talk about combos. A combo refers to a series of attacks that are guaranteed, as in, if the first one connects, the opponent cannot escape anyhow until the combo is over. A very basic combo is Nightmare's BB. If the first B attack connects, the second one is guaranteed. Some combos might not work normally. For example, Nightmare's while rising AA first hit doesn't guarantee the second. But in Soul Calibur, if you are hit during an attack animation, you will be in a counter state that leaves you open for more time. In this case, Nightmare while rising AA is a combo on counter hit. Throws or grabs are moves that get through an opponent's guard and deal quite some damage. They have low range though and can be countered as well as dodged by crouching. Now, let's talk about something Nightmare specific since this is the character you'll see me play the most. After some attacks, Nightmare and his sword will start glowing. This indicates that Nightmare is now in Night Terror Charge. Night Terror Charge allows Nightmare to perform new moves, which are either empowered versions of already existing moves like 6B, new chains like KB, or completely new moves like Grimstride AB. All of these are very dangerous and damaging. After performing one of these, the Night Terror Charge is expanded. Nightmare usually gets access to Night Terror Charge at the end of combos with 2 AB or by triggering his special revenge attacks. When Nightmare uses 6A, 6B or 6K, it will glow before striking. This indicates that if Nightmare is struck during that attack, it will counter with an explosion and gain Night Terror Charge. Revenge attacks don't work on grabs, low attacks, break and unblockable attacks, as well as attacks past a certain damage threshold. So let's get back to a general mechanic, the meter. As you can see, landing hits on your opponent will gradually fill your meter. Successful reversal edge is especially good at building meter. Besides a very few character specific exceptions, meter can be expanded in two ways. The first one is soul charge. During soul charge, your character will be empowered having access to more moves. In Nightmare's case, he gets access to Night Terror charge moves as much as he wants. Activating soul charge costs one meter bar. The bar will start depleting once activated, indicating the duration left. The other way of expanding meter is using your critical edge, which basically functions as a super move. Just like soul charge, these two cost one bar of meter. Critical edges have different properties depending on the character. For example, Nightmare's critical edge can be held down and will auto-parry some attacks. Also, if you hold it down till max charge, it will be unblockable. Now, as a slightly more advanced mechanic, we have talked about counter hits but there is also Lethal Hits. Lethal Hits activates on few specific attacks under specific circumstances. For example, in Nightmare case, his 2-2-B normally works like this. But if 2-2-B hits the opponent's back, it will trigger a Lethal Hit, making them bounce and allowing a follow-up hit. Visually, Lethal Hits are indicated by a sort of slowdown. The last thing I want to talk about is how risky being on the ground is. When you are knocked down on the ground, you have different ways you can get up. You can guard or crouch guard, you can roll in different directions before getting up, you can wait on the ground, or you can press the guard button as soon as you hit the ground to perform a new Kemi and getting up as soon as possible. 
Ukemis can be performed in various directions as well. For example, in this case, after Mitsurugi is knocked down from Nightmare's AA, Nightmare will then follow up with a 6-6-B. If Mitsurugi stands still or Ukemi is backward or forward, he will get it and there will be a combo. However, if Mitsurugi Ukemi is sideways, so left or right, he will avoid the 6-6-B. But Nightmare can read that and try on 3-A to catch the sideways Ukemi. This knockdown game is referred to as Okizeme, or more commonly, Oki. Alright, I know that's a lot of information and some of this is not very intuitive, might be very hard to, you know, get through for beginners, but anyway, if you guys have any questions, something to clear up, I am no expert, but please, do ask away in the comments and I'll gladly try and help you out. With that said, I hope you enjoyed this video and look forward to more Soul Calibur content on the channel. I will see you all next time and I hope you have a good day.